Andrew uh, McCullough. He uh, is the senior writer for The Athletic. And Andy joins us now. He's covering the Shohei Otani story. Also, he has a book coming out, The Last of His Kind, Clayton Kershaw and the Burden of Greatness. Andy, thanks for joining us. Uh, how would you sum up, recap the last 48 hours? Uh, yeah, it's a bit busier of a week than I expected to have. I was kind of <laughs> looking forward to watching the tournament, you know, and getting ready for opening day next week. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ever since the LA times, you know, broke the original story, uh, about Otani and, you know, the firing of Ipe Mizuhara, the, uh, interpreter for Shohei Otani. And that was subsequently followed up by a, um, a really comprehensive and bizarre, frankly, story from ESPN, you know, quoting Mizuhara extensively. It's been a bit of a whirlwind, you know, trying to get a sense of like what major league baseball's role in is in all of this, what exactly the competing narratives are suggesting, um, you know, and just kind of trying to get a handle on what's going on all while the Dodgers have been in Seoul, South Korea, and have, you know, been on a plane for a significant portion of, you know, these these 48 hours. So, uh, yeah, you know, I was looking forward to watching some basketball, but I go, I won't be. But I'm trying to understand how they made the interpreter available to talk to ESPN for 90 minutes. Like, that's mind-boggling, Andy. I uh, would agree with you, Dan. It is a, it is a very interesting decision to have made Mizuharo available, especially uh, given that, you know, if you talk to like, uh, you know, legal experts, right, when detectives are trying to break a case, they like to get a suspect and lock him in on a story and, you know, commit to a, you know, a timeline of events. And Mizahara did that and then subsequently recanted, which sort of casts everything he said into doubt. You know, why would you believe him when he said everything that he just said was a lie? And so you have these two competing narratives, one in which, you know, Otani essentially, um, you know, uh, paid off his friend's gambling debts. And then you have what Otani's camp is now saying um, is that, you know, Mizuhara committed massive theft, you know, millions of dollars potentially. And they have not provided evidence yet of, you know, how that theft was, uh, you know, occurred. Um, but, you know, that's kind of for the, the authorities to figure out exactly how that happened. There's just like, there's so much left unsaid. There's not like a, a shoe that needs to drop here. It's like a foot locker that needs to drop, you know? And Otani coming back from spring training, can he avoid not saying anything? I mean, do you just use the, hey, it's a criminal investigation, I can't say anything? I suspect that that is the tack they will take for as long as they can. Um, I think the longer that they're silenced, the more it allows kind of rumor and innuendo and conjecture and speculation and all those sort of, you know, synonyms to, to fill the void. I think a lot of people are just wondering what the heck is going on. You know, um, Otani was fairly private to begin with. You know, he doesn't, they took, it was like pulling teeth trying to get his, you know, representatives to admit the name of his dog uh, during the off season. You know, he, he got married. He announced he was married this spring. His teammates with the Angels didn't even know he had a romantic partner. So it's, um yeah, I, I suspect that their strategy will be silence and point to, you know, an ongoing investigation. But um, it's, you know, it casts a pall over the start of the season for the Otani and the Dodgers for sure. How do baseball's gambling rules factor into this? Yeah, so it depends on which, you know, narrative uh, is proven to be accurate. And if he's the victim of a theft, which is what, you know, his camp is alleging and what Major League Baseball is currently accepting, you know, as something of a premise, um, uh, not much of anything per se. You know, it's kind of a matter of, you know, seeing just kind of how that theft occurred. If he was theoretically paying off an illegal bookmaker um, or placing bets with an illegal bookmaker, that would be a violation of Rule 21, which is the famous, you know, betting on uh, sports sort of thing. It, And then it just is a matter of, did he bet on baseball? There's zero evidence that, you know, there were any bets placed on baseball. Uh, Mizuhara denied that uh, in his, you know, one of the accounts he gave <laughs> ESPN, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I think, and so like, that's kind of like the central question I think is like just figuring out what, what was, what were these bets placed on is probably the most important thing. Um, if it's baseball, then, you know, that is a, really serious gets into really serious ramifications if it's not baseball the the league is pointed to you know there was jared cozart was fined in 2015 for illegally gambling and you know it's more of a pay a fine you know it, commissioner's discretion type of situation in a week where is this story in your opinion it's a great question i mean i think there i don't know how quickly 
evidence will come out. You know, this is part, this came up because, you know, there's a longstanding probe into, you know, bookmaking operations in Southern California. And Otani's name appeared in that investigation, that federal investigation. And reporters from the LA Times and ESPN, who've done tremendous work on this, you know, sort of ferreted it out. And so it's not like there's a timeline of like, oh, in, in a week, Otani's going to address all of this. I suspect that they will continue to have the cone of silence and just wait for the process to play out. Uh, but that could also change. I mean, and, you know, the fact that Mizuharo spoke initially was, you know, so shocking. I mean, who knows? Maybe he'll decide to talk a third time. Um, but I suspect it's kind of going to grind on for a while as, you know, Otani's legal camp, legal team sort of, you know, allows the authorities to pursue these charges. How did the interpreter get back from South Korea? I don't know. That's a great question. I really don't know. I don't know. It has been asked and... Um, Folks in that world with the Dodgers, with Otani's camp, no one really wants to talk about this situation for some reason. Yeah, go figure. Uh, yeah, that is a that is a wonderful question. Though. He is a senior writer for The Athletic, uh, Andy McCullough. Also, his book, The uh, Last of His Kind, Clayton Kershaw and the Burden of Greatness. Well, let me ask you one question about that. What is the burden of his greatness? Yeah, I mean, I think... Uh, as you would know, I think this is like the only media outlet that Kershaw seems to like dealing with uh, is coming on your show. So you've told, talked to him a lot over the years. And I I think in, you know, I've covered baseball for 15 years now, and I feel like he is a person who, because of what he has achieved, has been held to a certain standard and has kind of set, spent his career, you know, trying to reach that. And, you know, you can see it in the postseason struggles and the way that he has, you know, subjected himself to, you know, workloads, to pitching through injuries, to, you know, basically putting his body and reputation at risk, all in service of trying to, you know, essentially give everything that he can to his craft. And so, um, you know, yeah, it's the book is uh, an exploration of kind of what it has been like for him, you know, really in these last 20 years, you know, operating under that and living essentially like in the hull of a ship and dealing with that pressure, if that makes sense. Did our show make the book? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Because like he talks about stuff and then I would, you know, when some, we, we, he and I talked uh, like a, a bunch for this over the past couple of years. And so there were times when he talked about things on here and I would, you know, get him to you know expand or explore. Just it opened up avenues. And so thank you for you know, all your help <laughs> over the years. It's, it was really helpful in research. Yeah. You know, I find him interesting, but I had to approach him from a different angle than just let me ask you baseball things it, mm -hmm. it was there's a lot of different ways to try to get to somebody and I didn't know him and then the first time we had him on I realized that if I was going to get anything baseball wise I couldn't go ask baseball questions mm -hmm. they almost had to come out in a different way I don't know if you felt that way I I was throwing off speed pitches constantly <laughs> yeah. to him you gotta you know look you, you gotta make him work a little bit I mean he's an ex exceedingly um disciplined sort of person. He he's very controlled and, and measured in what he wants to say. You know, he's a very thoughtful guy. And so he it very often it's hard to kind of move him off the spot, as it were, in like a kind of a tennis metaphor. Um, so yeah, you know, we had really you know, lengthy conversations over the past couple of years about just kind of his career, you know, uh, childhood, you know, legacy, all that stuff, all the stuff he hates talking about, but it was a <laughs> enjoyable process. So I'm excited for people to get a chance to read it in, uh, in a couple of months. All right. Andy, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. That's uh, Andy McCollins, senior writer for The Athletic, and his book, The Last of His Kind, Clayton Kershaw and the Burden of Greatness.